Imagine running a full power app inside a Chrome extension. Well, that's the idea I had a few days ago. But when I checked and searched online how to do it, there was basically no information about it. So I decided to build it myself. And today I'll show you exactly how I created my own Power Apps note-taking Chrome extension and how you can build yours too. And the best part, you get everything you need to rebuild this for free. That includes the full Chrome extension setup and most of the components from my free Power Apps library to build the layout. So you can follow along and build your own version. So grab your coffee, we're going in. This project has two parts, a power app for the actual UI and logic and a Chrome extension that loads it in a pop-up. Think of the Chrome extension as a box, a small container that opens the power app when clicked. So first, we set up that box and then build an app that fits perfectly inside it. The pop-up window is small, around 350 times 590 pixels, so we'll keep the layout simple and vertical. The top part should have like a search bar and maybe a tab bar to filter things. The middle part should have a gallery with all the saved nodes with titles and previews. And at the bottom right there should be some kind of floating plus button to add new notes and when we press on that plus button i want a pop-up to open where we can type in our snippet give it a title and maybe even choose in what category it belongs like maybe code or notes or maybe even prompts and then we need a save button to save everything and once saved the note shows up in the gallery and tapping it copies the snippet to your clipboard and that's the full flow that would be a perfect app for me right now so let's build this all right so before we even touch power apps we first need to set up this Chrome extension. But don't worry, it's actually pretty simple. You only need three small files, a manifest JSON, pop-up HTML and pop-up CSS, just for some light styling. So let's start with the manifest JSON. That's basically the brain of the extension. It tells Chrome what your extension is and what to do when you click on that icon. So here's what mine looks like. You don't need to understand everything, but just as a quick breakdown, we have things like the version, name, permissions, but important, the default pop-up opens your pop-up HTML file, which is important, and the default icon shows your logo and the toolbar, but that's optional. Now the actual UI, and that's pop-up HTML. This is basically a tiny web page that lives inside the extension pop-up, and it's where we embed our power app. It's nothing fancy, but you can see an iframe that loads the app. And I added this small code snippet to the iframe so power apps can copy stuff into the clipboard. And finally the CSS, which is our pop-up CSS. It makes sure that everything fits nicely into a small pop-up window. It just gives some information like margin, padding, width, or height. And that's it. So you can create them on your own or you can click the link in the description and download the files from there. So now that we created the files, here's how to load them into Chrome. Open your browser and go to the following URL. Then turn on developer mode, it's at the top right. Then you'll click load unpacked. Here you can select the folder with all the files. And that's it. Chrome will instantly add the extension to your toolbar. And now when you click your extension icon, boom, your Chrome extension opens in a pop-up. Well, it's still empty, but it leads us to our next part, building the app and power apps. All right, to get started, we want to start with a blank app in a responsive design. So once loaded, we can actually delete everything which is in there. And we want to set the preview to 350 times 590 pixels. So we will get the perfect preview for our pop-up of the Chrome extension. And now we want to start adding components. And for this, we can go to my component library. The link is in the description. And here we want to look for an input field, which we can use as a search bar. I like this one. So we copy the YAML code, go to Power Apps, paste it there. And here we go. A nice looking input field, which can be used as a search bar. And now I will just add some adjustments like making the width parent width times 90%. So it's not the full parent width, but almost. Then we can adjust the X value to center it in the middle of the app. We can also adjust the Y value, set that to 20, and then we can adjust the hint text. And there we go. Now, if you look into the preview, this looks kind of cool. This is the input field. Now we go to back to the component library and we can get a tab bar. And if we go to the settings of the tab bar, we can directly type in what we want to have in there. We can look at the preview if it looks good. If yes, we copy the YAML code, go back to Power Apps, and we can paste it there. And here we go. We have everything directly in Power Apps. Now we can adjust some settings here as well. Adjust the height, maybe the Y property and also the X property. Make it centered as the input bar and we can also adjust the width to make it about 90% times the parent width so it looks good in our app when we... And when we check the preview... Yeah, this looks kind of cool. So beneath that we need our gallery. And for this we will go and look for a flexible height gallery. We will put it under our tab bar. Also here we will adjust the controls, make it centered in the app, 
make it make the width the same width as the search field in the tab bar and then we can start putting components into it and we will start with a container just a blank container we will adjust the x and y value to put it both to zero and then the width can be template width and the height can be template height and then we can add some padding so the cards look good next to each other and then we can start adding text labels the first one is going to be for the title one thing I realized is that our SharePoint list is not yet connected, so we will connect the SharePoint list. This is how it looks like. I just created a dummy list. We have three columns, the title column, a content column, and a type column. The type column is just to declare if it's a node, prompt, or code. And that's basically it. Going back to Power Apps, we can now adjust the control of the label. We will put the label to the parent width. We will add another label under it. And here important, we want to press auto height. This will make the height of the cards adjust to the text or the, or the amount of text which is in content and will let us read all the content which is in there, which is cool. So after adjusting all those settings, we will adjust the height property of the container. We will make it the height of the title field and the height of the content field. And there we go. Now we can connect it to our SharePoint list. And after connecting it to our SharePoint list, we can declare that the title is this item title and content label is and the content label is this item content now there's still still some mistakes in the control settings even though we did that already i think i moved the gallery and so the settings got lost so we will center it again we will adjust the y value to to start under the tab bar and then we will adjust the width of the gallery to parent width times 90% so it's the same width as the tab bar and the input field and here we go this is a nice looking gallery but the sides and the scroll bar I don't like that so we will this deselect the scroll bar and we will adjust the width once more to 99% because that kind of looks better and more aligned with the other components and now we have a nice looking gallery under the tab bar now one more missing part is the height property of the gallery because we didn't define that. So we are going to select parent height minus the tab bar height minus the input field height minus another 60 pixels. So it's aligned at the bottom and here we go. This looks good. So now what we need is a some kind of button to open up a pop-up for new input and I prepared a button for that. It's just a container with a round button and an icon on top of it. You can even use modern controls. They have icons included. So when pressing on that, I want a pop-up to open. And this is how it looks like. So it looks pretty cool down there. What we need to do is we need to adjust the X value and the Y value. So basically it's always setting it 20 pixels from the corners and it's so it's gonna be fixed there. And now we want to add the pop-up components. For this, we can go to the component library and select this model. We can copy the YAML code, go back, and just paste it into Power Apps. It's just a shortcut, so we don't have to build everything from scratch. So we will delete that show button and then we will leave the model itself. So we will set the on select property to select the var pop-up variable to true. And here we will set the visibility to var pop-up and there we go. Now it opens our pop-up model, but actually we don't really need that card in the middle so we will delete that card in the middle because we need a new card a different kind of card so we'll go back to, com to the component library and we will select this kind of card this is what we want we could adjust some settings but i want to do something else with it we will copy the yaml code and we will go back we will paste it and after pasting it we will start adjusting some settings like the x value the y value we will uh, we will adjust the width and the height to be responsive as well for the height for the width we want parent width times 90 percent and for the height we want parent height times 90 percent and this is how it, would, how it would look like so this is pretty cool and now we need to adjust some more settings where the buttons are going to be and what other components we want to have in there. For the Y component of the buttons, I will select, I will put that 20 pixels above the corners at the bottom. I will delete those components with title and subtitle. And then I will copy the input field and the label out of the gallery because I want to, I still want to have them, but I want to have them both in a different way so we cannot use the gallery here. So I will delete all those settings in there, they are not necessary. I will just clean it up a bit 
Um, you can just input new labels and new input fields as well, it doesn't matter. But once that is all done, once everything is set to the right sizes, we can type in the title which we want, which is going to be title in this case, and a hint text. In this case, it's going to be enter title. And then we can copy those both components and just paste them in our app again. Perfect. And this can be, and this is going to be the label and the input field for our content. So we can change the text from title to content. I'm just struggling here a bit. Also renaming the components on the left side is always a good idea. And then re renaming the text to content, renaming the hint text. Perfect. Now one thing is missing. We need a drop down to choose which category our note is for. And here we can go to the component library and go to the settings of the dropdown. You can just copy it as well and do it on your own in Power Apps. This is just a quicker way. And then we can go to preview. This is how it would look like. We copy it and then we go to Power Apps. We paste it into our app. Perfect. Now we have a good looking dropdown. We just have to adjust some settings. We will need to adjust it to the parent width. We will adjust the settings in the container as well. So the button should have the parent width as well. We, I put the animated logo on the right side and those are just some simple settings. I centered everything in that container because I realized I didn't do that in the beginning. And once everything is centered, once everything is at its place, you can place things as you want. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. You just need some kind of inputs and buttons to save information. But this is how it could look like. So having the input up there, having a drop down with those options and then another option down there for inputting content. So we need to adjust this Y setting as well. And we're going to adjust the height and the Y value of the input field of the content. As I said before, you can do it as you wish. You can do it just the way you want to do it or you can copy the settings I'm using here. And then one important step for the content input, we need to make it multi-line because we will put in more lines of text in here or we might put in more lines of text in here. What I'm doing here is I'm adjusting the hover and pressed color. And there we go. Now we have a good looking pop-up where we can input title, the type and the content. What I'm doing now is I'm setting up the buttons. Here I'm declaring that var pop-up is going to be false. So when, I'm, when I press on that button, I can close it. I realized that I didn't, that we also have to set the visibility of the card to var pop-up, the visibility of the pop-up card. And once we do that, the card disappears and when pressing on the plus button, it appears again. And perfect, now we have a nice pop-up which appears when we press on the add button. All right, now we want to actually make the filter settings work. So I put this code in here. You can pause the video here and you can read the filter settings. So basically I'm filtering for the tabs and I'm filtering for the search bar. So I want to filter for prompt, code or notes. And when the tab bar is on all, I want to show showcase all the items in the gallery and I want to have a search bar where I can search specifically for items in my database. So here important, the on select property of our tab button is set selected tab this item label. Usually when you copy the YAML code it's going to be ID not label. So we need to go to the coloring of the button and change this item ID to this item label and then the colors will be correct again and we will have those white tabs once they're clicked. Now when we search for, when we search for, when we click on a tab, it filters, but if we search in the search bar, it filters even more. And that's for me the perfect combination to look for my notes. So I wanted to showcase the save option, but then I realized that I didn't include the save, the patch function. So this is the patch, the patch function. Also here you can pause the video and check it, but what we're doing is we're setting a new line, we're saving title, content and type, and then we're setting the pop-up variable to false, resetting the content input and the title input. And now when we now when we showcase the when we go to the preview, we can type in just something, just an example. This is a test. We will save it as a as notes. And then we can type in content in here. 
So this is our first test. Let's see if it works. Save it. And then if we go to all, scroll down, we will see our new note. We can even change the filtering of the gallery to show all the notes at the top. But for now, I think this is enough. And if we, if we filter for notes, we will see it even better that our note is there. So one more thing I wanted is a button with a copy to clipboard function. So in our container with the title and content labels, I put in a button, deleted out all the colors. I just have a pressed fill with 40% of the opacity and a hover fill with 20% of the opacity. And this is how it looks like. I think it's pretty cool. So on, in the on select, we just write copy this item content. And then once we click on it, the content of that item is copied to our clipboard. This is how it looks like. So I pressed on it and it directly copied the content in there. And this is pretty cool because if we, if we save any code snippets or prompts, we can just press on them and then paste them into ChatGPT or our software editor. Or if we forget a patch function or whatever, we can just type it in here. We can save it and the next time we patch something or we write a patch function, we can just copy it from our note taking app and put it into Power Apps. And here I'm just demonstrating that it actually saved everything to our database in SharePoint. So now it's done, we saved the whole project. And once we saved it, we still need to publish it. And after publishing, let's carry on with the next step. All right, so the last step is going to be to put our Power App into our Chrome extension to use it there. And to do this, we're going to take the URL of our Power App and put it into the Chrome extension. And this is how we do it. So we open up the pop-up HTML with any code editor. I'm using cursor. And here we have this iframe line. And in there we have the source. And here we need to put in our URL. So we go to Power App, we open our app, and then we can copy the URL. Then we go back to our editor and we put in our URL into those double quotes. And this is it, now we can save it. Usually the extension will automatically be updated, but we can also update it here once more. And now if we go to our extension and open it, it will open up our app. We can allow, and now we have the app in our Chrome extension. That's it, and now it's work. it should be working. We can test it, we can type in something new. Let's say, is it working? Test, and we will say this is a note, save it. And now we can look, yeah, here it is. It's working. Our new node is in our app. And anytime we need it, we can actually even, let's unpin this and we can pin our extension. So anytime we're working now, we can just go to our extensions, click on our Chrome extension, and then we can copy any notes or prompts or codes, or just type in something new. And yeah, that's it. This is a power app in a Chrome extension. All right, and that's it. I hope you picked up something new in this video. And remember, you can download the files to the Chrome extension and check out the free component library. Just follow the link in the description. So if you found this helpful, click the like button and subscribe if you like. And other than that, I'll catch you in the next video.